Welcome to a lesson on the tangential and normal components of acceleration. Acceleration can be broken down into two parts. One part is tangent to the path of motion, and the other is perpendicular to the path of motion. The tangent part or component is called the tangential component, and the perpendicular part is the normal component. The tangential component represents the acceleration of the object in a straight line, while the normal component of acceleration will increase as the speed and curvature increase. And then lastly, the tangential and normal components of acceleration will be perpendicular for circular motion at a constant rate. Let's go and take a look at a graph to visualize this. So at this point here, this red vector would be our acceleration vector. This blue vector here would be the tangent component of the acceleration vector. Notice it's pointing in the direction the object would move in a straight line from this point. And then in green, here is our normal component of acceleration. So we'll be finding both the blue and the green components of acceleration in this video. So taking a look at this here, the acceleration vector valued function would be equal to the tangential component of acceleration times the unit tangent vector valued function plus the normal component of acceleration times the unit normal vector valued function. And you can see below there are several formulas to determine these components, but we're going to be using these last formulas here in this video. Notice they both require us to find the velocity vector valued function as well as the acceleration vector valued function. For the tangential components, we'll dot them and then divide by the magnitude of v. For the normal component, we'll cross v and a, then find the magnitude and divide by the magnitude of v. Remember to determine v, we need to find r prime, and to determine a, we need to find v prime or r double prime. Let's go and take a look at our examples. We want to determine the tangential and normal components of acceleration when t is equal to two for this vector valued function. So let's go ahead and start by determining the velocity vector valued function and the acceleration vector valued function. Remember the velocity vector valued function will be the derivative of our given vector valued function, so that'll have an x component of one and a y component of one half t. So the acceleration vector valued function is going to be equal to the vector valued function with the x component of zero and the y component of one half. Notice they also both require the magnitude of the velocity vector valued function. Let's go ahead and find that now. It's going to be the square root of one squared, that'll be one, plus one half t squared will be one fourth t to the second. Okay, let's go ahead and see if we can find the tangential component now. So we're going to dot v and a and then divide by the magnitude of v. And we already found the magnitude. So we'll have one times zero, that's going to be zero, and then one half t times one half, that'll be one fourth t, and then of course our denominator is going to stay the same. Now we could simplify this, but since we only need to know the value of this when t is equal to two, we'll go ahead and sub in two for t now. So we'll have one fourth times two, that's going to be one half, and the denominator is going to be the square root of one plus one-fourth times two squared, well two squared is four, one-fourth times four would be one, so we'll have the square root of two. Looks like our tangential component is going to be one over two square root two. So here's our tangential component of acceleration at t equals two. Now let's go ahead and determine the normal component of acceleration. So on the next slide we'll go ahead and determine v cross with a, and then determine that magnitude, and then divide by the magnitude of v. Let's go ahead and determine v cross with a. So we'll have the first row will be i, j, k. The second row will be the components of v, so we'll have one, one half t, and the z component would be zero. The third row will come from a, so we'll have zero, one half, zero. We'll go ahead and use the cofactor expansion method to determine this. So eliminate row one, column one for this first two by two determinant. So give us one half t, 
zero, one half zero. Here we'll have one, zero, zero, zero. And here we'll have one, one half t, zero, one half. This is gonna work out pretty well. Here we'll have zero minus zero. Here we'll have zero minus zero. And then for the z component, we're gonna have one half minus zero. So now we determine the magnitude of this. It's gonna be pretty easy to do again. It's gonna be the square root of one half squared, the square root of one fourth. It'll be one half. Okay, so now we're set to determine the normal component of acceleration. Again, okay, we have the magnitude of the cross product, that's one half. Our denominator is the magnitude of V, which we found on the previous screen. The square root of one plus one fourth T squared. We'll go ahead and evaluate this when T is equal to two. So again, when T is two, this is gonna be the square root of two. Looks like we have one over two square root two. So it looks like both our normal component and our tangential component of acceleration have the same value. If we go back to the graph, that should make sense because if we take a look at the magnitude of these two vectors, the tangent vector and the normal vector, they look like they're the same length. And you can also visualize if you were to take this blue vector here, move the initial point to the terminal point of the green vector, the sum of those two vectors would be the acceleration vector. Let's go and take a look at one more example. Here's the same type of problem with a different vector valued function, and we're concerned about the components of acceleration when t is equal to one. So the velocity vector valued function is gonna be one, three t squared, and the acceleration vector valued function is going to be zero, six t, and the magnitude of the velocity vector valued function is gonna be the square root of one squared, that'll be one, plus three t squared to the second power, that'll be nine t to the fourth. So we'll go straight to determining the tangential component. So we'll dot these and then divide by this magnitude. So V dotted with A will have one times zero, that's zero, and then three T squared times six T, that'll be 18 T to the third, all divided by the square root of one plus nine T to the fourth. So when T is equal to one, it's like we'll have 18 all over the square root of one plus That'll be nine, so the square root of 10. Now it's gonna take a little more work to determine the normal component, but let's go ahead and do that on the next screen. Okay, so I've already set this up to save some time. Here's the setup for V cross with A. Again, the first row is IJK, second row is from V, and third row is from A. We're using the cofactor expansion method. Again, it's gonna work out pretty well. This will be zero minus zero for the x component, zero minus zero for the y component, and the z component is gonna be six t minus zero, so we have six t. So the magnitude of the cross product will be the square root of six t to the second, or 36 t squared, which will give us six t. So the normal component of acceleration is gonna be equal to six t divided by the square root of one plus nine t to the fourth. Now we'll sub in t equals one, we're gonna have six all over the square root of 10. So here's our normal component and here's our tangential component. Notice the tangent component is three times that of the normal component Let's go and take a look at this graphically. In red we see the acceleration vector. Notice the tangent component of the acceleration vector is much longer than the normal component as you see here in green. And it does look like it's three times longer than the normal component. Which is a good indication that we did our work correctly. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching.